Hi, I'm uh, Lenny Sokol, and this is... Brad, nice to meet you. We are here today to talk about professional wrestling in Vermont, which is, uh, interestingly, not really around. It used to be, oh. but um, we also want to talk about the effects it could have on our local culture and potential benefits it could have. Yeah. Um, so yeah, as far as we can tell, the, uh, the last promotion in Vermont closed about 15 or 20 years ago or so, and since then there hasn't really been that much pro wrestling around here. Um, so, we, uh, let's see, where do you want to start with this? We want to start with, um, scripted versus fake. Right, okay, okay. Yeah. so, yeah, we, we want to discuss, uh, opinions people have about pro wrestling, uh, how it's, yeah, how it's sort of viewed by the community and how we envision it could go from the future. All right, so, it seems like the biggest problem that people have with pro wrestling is the fact that it is scripted. Um, I say scripted with air quotes, but it is. Right. Um, and that's a big turnoff for a lot of people. Um, which is very interesting to me because, and this is a, an opinion that's shared along, among quite a few different people that I've heard over and over again, is that um, every TV show that you watch is scripted. Well, any, any fictional TV show, you know, I mean, you watch the news, sure, that's not... Oh, I mean, even that is scripted. Yeah. yeah uh, and so uh, it doesn't necessarily really take away from the story that you're experiencing because that is truly, or at least that's what I love about right. pro wrestling. It's sure it's the uh, athletic, incredible things that you're going to see, but it's the stories that they tell, the, uh, the compelling narratives, uh, the struggles, good against evil, good against good, you know, evil against evil. Uh, it could be anything. And um, even just cool stuff, whether it be stunts or, you know, a whole persona that you're just into. Yeah. Um, and so it's just very surprising to me that people kind of stop there with the, with the whole scripted versus not. Um, yeah, well, I, I actually have a few friends who um, I think the error is in comparing it to things like UFC where, um, you know, to, too linearly do they compare it. Because comparing Very it is fine. So. But just being like, oh, it's not as real as this. These guys are really trying to, you know, beat each other up. Um, they serve different purposes. Um, and that's a common misconception that you want to see these two guys actually fighting it out, which, like, is cool if you, sure. you want to see that. But the point of professional wrestling is really to convey a storyline, create a narrative. Yeah. Um, so, uh, um, sorry, sorry, I just lost my train of thought. Oh, that's <laughs> right. My the, bad. Yeah, it can be more, uh, violent than your typical right. sports, though, right? Yeah, so, um, my, a big point I want to point out with, like, the difference between UFC and wrestling, uh, is that, uh, you, uh, when, when you're watching a UFC fight, MMA, MMA fight, you're watching it to see people get beat up and you're watching it to see people get hurt, which isn't necessarily the case with wrestling. You, you want to see violence, sure. Uh, an exciting wrestling match is a really great thing, but um, the, uh, the, you, you don't really necessarily want to see someone carted out on a stretcher because that's, it kind of ruins the mood for everybody, especially when, you're, when everybody's there to have fun. Um, another good point, I think, would be that, like, uh, in an MMA fight, it can be over like that. Right. It can start and last 15 seconds. A wrestling yep. match, you know, it can go for uh, forever. I've seen wrestling matches that go up to, like, at least an hour. Man, I, I can't stand it. When I go over fight night on Saturdays uh, with a bunch of my buddies, and we watch a lot of the MMA fights, and when you get to the headline fight, and it's over in, like, 30 seconds, it's just like... Come on! Is it? <laughs> yeah. Really? Come on. Yeah. Um, like, yeah, it's fun to watch, but like, you get inconsistencies in the thing you're watching. Mm -hmm. You know. And utilizing a match to tell a story too. Uh, like, um, I, for instance, pay per view I watched over the weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, they came out to the ring uh, carrying a body bag, um, and like one of them ended up in the body bag like during the course of the course of the night, and it was like playing and played into this whole like. Uh, uh, being uh, unafraid to like put yourself through that kind of like harm and everything yeah. uh, and, uh, and there are elements of comedy to it too. You can, absolutely. Do, it. You can do anything you want with it. It's amazing <laughs> uh, Which actually I think is a good segue into 
uh, how we think that it could benefit the community, uh, especially if we had some sort of a, a, a community-driven program that was possibly uh, associated with, um, you know, different different aspects of arts, theater, um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, if we could get the sports community yeah. involved and everything, and right. like kind of bring the, those all are together. really the two main spirits that. Uh, professional wrestling sort of, sort of conjoins mm -hmm. is the, the sports and the drama, mm -hmm. which you know you think you think of a classic high school like drama kid, sports kid not getting along. Um, I don't know what sort of school you grew up in, but um, the blending of those two cultures is a unique and powerful thing, and both those things have a lot more in common than you'd think. Mm. The potential for building up confidence, um, finding a, a group identity that you identify with, and, and creating identity for yourself that's empowering. Um, and the, this isn't just for kids, too. You know, I'm, I'm Which is something that we want to talk about a little bit. Yeah, we'll get there. Yeah. Um, but for adults, too. Um, both these things are really good. You see adult programs for um, drama and sports and for professional wrestling, too. People getting into, into it later in life. And um, Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. 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 And it, it just is amazing for the confidence. It's good for you physically. You're not only learning how to do, you know, all these performances, but you're learning like difficult stunts. Mm -hmm. You're lifting up somebody's body over your shoulders. You know, you want to get strong enough to do cool stuff like that. So. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and there's so there's so many elements, so many aspects of it. And uh, furthermore, like you know, building on the whole, you mentioned kids. Uh, it would be. I think it would be the coolest thing if we had a, a program around here that was engaging kids in pro wrestling because it's, a, it's this amazing thing that has an ability to take people out of their shells and bring them into uh, a headspace that is not necessarily one that they would always live in. Uh, and, you know, you could, it's uh, this cross appeal between you know, uh, drama kids or kids that are really into, you know, storytelling and reading or anything like that, they would be interested in that element of it. The sports kids would be all interested in coming in and doing all of the, the really cool moves. Uh, I, like, uh, I know uh, when, I was, when I was really young, my, uh, my parents offered to sign me up for a wrestling program and I was so excited. And I, I showed up there and it turns out it was traditional wrestling. And it was just the most disappointing thing. I was so sad. I only lasted like a couple of weeks. Uh, it, and it just wasn't fun because it didn't have uh, that, that fun, yeah, that fun <laughs> element about it, um, which I know that a lot of people can find that in sports, but that's something that I've never really been able to find that in but sports. But it bridged that gap for you. Yeah, I yeah. would absolutely bridge that mm -hmm. gap because um, you don't necessarily need to be the most athletic person to be a great wrestler. Mm -hmm. I mean, just look at, like, uh, an example might actually be John Cena. Uh, he, he's, he's a big guy, sure, but if you've ever watched one of his wrestling matches, it's a yawn fest. Yeah. They're really boring matches. Yeah. Uh, he carries himself through his on-screen promos uh, and the way that he engages his audience. And the fact that he's a meme. And the fact that he's a meme doesn't hurt. Yeah. Uh, that really just buys into all of it. That can only make you stronger in pro yeah. wrestling. Uh, so, yeah, um, I think that would be such a great opportunity for kids to have, uh, bringing them out of their shells and introducing them to new things, making them more confident, stepping into other people's shoes, telling stories. Uh, getting across moral points, uh, if you if you so choose. You oh, absolutely, know. absolutely. There's been a lot of research uh, that's been done into role playing, mm. specifically for the development of children, not just young children. Though there's a lot of focus on that, but throughout, you know, all the age ranges of children, and role playing does all these really really great things for people who have low self confidence, mm -hmm. people who have trouble speaking in public. All sorts of things, um, and it's not just something for young children. It's actually starting to be used in universities mm -hmm. as a method for gaining perspective, um, not just in acting classes, but in classes like the ones we're taking. Yeah, um, it's a way to really explore parts of yourself and your own understanding that you normally don't get access to. And for some people, that's a really critical part of their own personality. 
Yeah, I know that I'm always really jealous of anybody that was like, oh yeah, my family and I have been playing D&D since I was five. That's, <laughs> like, me. That's me, man. That's that's me. I, I always wish that could have been me because yeah. that would have really helped me to come out of my shell a lot yeah. more as a kid. And, and heck, the most fun characters to play are the jack ogres and dwarves who just like toss boulders and stuff. Like, man, I, I wish I was uh, into professional wrestling when I was younger. Yeah, like, I would have been all about that. See, all when, about that. Uh, my preference is more towards like, the the mystical like yeah. spell casting sorcerers bards <laughs> music all that which is like you know my favorite parts of pro wrestling too you yeah. take you take like the undertaker who has yeah. this uh, incredible That's mystique the, about the guy it. with such the wind streak yeah, <laughs> yeah. He, he comes from another world he yeah. is this otherworldly being that comes in and destroys and like it's yeah, this unstoppable force. Uh, and when he goes away, he doesn't die. He just disappears. He goes to another realm or, like, whatever. Um, and, you know, I love that suspension of disbelief that comes with wrestling. Right. Uh, you don't need to know, like, the fact that it's not real is part of the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's the same sort of enthusiasm you see with people, like, really into Star Wars or Lord of the Rings or Star Trek. Mm -hmm. Like, you, you just, just, like, looking at your eyes as you're talking like that. You guys probably see it too, and just like the amount of excitement and enjoyment and like passion that goes in these stories that happen. So, um, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure we were walking around the street interviewing some people, and it's it's like there's a hidden following in Vermont. You know, their their eyes would light up just like his. Like, you want to talk about what professional wrestling? Yes, you know. So. I think there's an itch we've started to scratch at here. All right, there's a couple more things that I just want to cover really quick before we run out of time here. Um, the uh, the idea of something that we talked about before was the embracing the violence in our nature in right. in a way that was safe and like so. I think we can all agree that humans human beings aren't necessarily the most inherently peaceful. Like we <laughs> we want to be. We we enjoy. Peace. We like getting along with each other, but it's the goal. Yeah, but but we sometimes we would just love to see some guys beating up on each other because it's just fun. It's, you, you love to yeah. pick a side. You love to get involved with it, um, and so it, it kind of provides that outlet without actually you know going to uh, to go see some gladiators chop some people's heads off yeah, <laughs> like right, like it used yeah. to be way back in the day that was the most popular form of entertainment it was so, it was yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it you know uh, society as a whole i think benefits from uh creative outlets for that sort of uh uh energy that kind of energy um and so one last point would just be the point of role models. Yeah. Um, and we talked about how, uh, um, you know, people that you might, might idolize as a kid, real life people, mm -hmm. um, you know, people are fallible. Yeah. I, I know that in the past I've found out something about somebody that I thought was incredible right, yeah. that, oh man, really? Oh like no, my kinda... favorite quarterback like is really mean to his wife or whatever, you, stuff you don't like finding out. Right, and sure, and uh, something I love about wrestling is that it gives you the ability to have those heroes and know that they're characters um, mm -hmm. and know that they aren't necessarily a, a real person, know that they like, you know, whoever is playing the character, sure, they're fallible, but that character can be a hero. The, to they're you. like Captain America. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and everybody needs heroes. I I think. I need heroes. Yeah, I need heroes. Um, so yeah, I think that about wraps up our our conversation yep. on us, uh, uh, wrestling, pro wrestling, in the Burlington area, and what we could hope to see from that in the future. And hopefully, we've given you something to think about. Thanks very much for joining us.